This video will show you how to find volume and surface area of figures formed by rotations and combination solids. In example one, it says the right triangle pictured is rotated about line L in order to find a three-dimensional solid. In part A, they want us to sketch and identify the solid that's formed by this rotation. So the first thing that we need to do is go reread and get a closer look at what we're trying to do here. It says we're going to rotate that around line L. So this is going to be the line about which we're going to turn that solid. So if we were to turn that, and you can envision rotating or turning that triangle around that line, it's going to form another triangle over here. And when it's all is said and done, you're going to end up with a cone. If you want to, you can go ahead and draw that cone or sketch that cone. That cone is going to have a height of 4. It's going to have a radius where its base, circular base, is going to have a radius of 3. And if you know your Pythagorean triples, you know that the slant height over here is going to be of length 5. So as far as sketching it, there's a picture of what it looks like, identifying it. It's a cone, and if you want to be very specific, you can say those given dimensions. In part B now, they want us to find the surface area and the volume of that cone. So its surface area is going to be made up of its lateral area plus the area of its circular base. And it, notice for the cone, there is only one base. So I'm going to start by going ahead and finding the lateral area of my cone. Lateral area is found by doing pi times the radius times the slant height. So pi times 3 times 5, or in other words, 15 pi square units. So I'm going to come over here and plug that into my formula for lateral area. And now I need to go find the area of my base. For any cone, the area of the base is a circle. So the formula that I'm going to use here is area of the base is equal to pi times r squared. So my area here ends up being 9 pi. So when I combine the, my lateral area with the area of my base, my total surface area here, 25, I'm sorry, 24 pi in either square inches or inches squared. Moving along to the volume, I'm going to find the volume by doing one-third times the area of the base times the height of the cone. I already found the area of the base to be 9 pi, so I'm going to go substitute that into the formula. The height of the cone is going to be the distance from the vertex or the perpendicular distance from the vertex down to the base. So you want to make sure that you understand and use the height rather than the slant height here. So when I go plug a third times 9 times 4 into my calculator, it tells me 12. Since I haven't yet multiplied by the pi, 12 pi and then cubic inches. Now, notice here that because it didn't tell me to round anywhere in the question or anywhere in the problem, I'm going to leave my answer in terms of pi. And that's always going to be the case unless if you're asked to round. And if you're asked to round, then you want to punch that times pi into your calculator and round to whatever you've been requested to do in the problem. All right, so there's the rotation in example one. Let's go ahead and move on to the mailbox in number two. This, I think, is an interesting question. It says, find both the volume and the surface area of the mailbox pictured below. And if we look at the shape of that mailbox, it doesn't resemble any of the three-dimensional figures that we've studied and can find surface areas and volumes for. So what I'm going to do, similar to what we did when we looked at areas, is I'm going to divide this up into two pieces for which we can and do have formulas to find surface areas in volumes. So I'm going to think about that mailbox as being half of a cylinder up at the top together with a rectangular base or a rectangular prism for a base down at the bottom. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find the volume of that half cylinder which comprises the top part. Now I can either find the volume of an entire cylinder and divide it by two or I can start right out with my formula for an entire cylinder and then do uh, divide that by 2. I'm just going to go find the area of an entire cylinder, and once I know the volume of the entire cylinder, 
I can just take half of that volume, and that'll be the volume that's uh, occupied by my half of a cylinder. So formula for finding the volume of a cylinder, volume is equal to area of the base times the height. So the base of this cylinder is going to be a circle. And the formula for finding area of a circle, area equals pi times r squared. So the radius here is either going to be 4 if you measure from the center to the right, or 4 if you measure from the center up to the top. Either way, the radius of that circle is going to be 4. So that makes the area of the base 16 pi. The height of my cylinder is going to be the distance between the two circular bases, or in this case, 20 inches. So when I get my calculator out and multiply the 16 times the 20, I get 320 pi. And again, it doesn't say to round, so I leave my answer in terms of pi. Remember that volume is for a whole cylinder. For a half of a cylinder, I'm going to have to take that volume and divide it by 2. So when I get my calculator out and do the 320 divided by 2, I find out that the volume for half of a cylinder is 160 pi. And if I want to, I can say cubic inches. Now I need to find the volume for the rectangular prism that makes up the bottom of my mailbox. So you can either use the same formula that you used for the cylinder, that the volume is equal to the area of the base times the height, or you can use your old trusty volume equals length times width times height. So the dimensions here of this rectangular prism are going to be 20 by 8 by 5. giving it a volume of 800 cubic inches. So the total volume here is going to be the volume of that half of a cylinder, or the 160 pi, plus the 800 cubic inches from the rectangular prism, giving us a total volume of 160 pi plus 800 cubic inches. Notice that the 160 has a pi attached to it, the 800 does not. They're not like terms, and therefore we cannot and do not combine them. All right, so there's the volume. Now I'm going to go ahead and approach the surface area. So surface area, again, I'm going to start by finding the, the surface area of an entire cylinder, and then because I only want half of that, I'm going to take that uh, surface area that I find and divide it by two. All right, so cylinder, again, I'm telling the person reading my paper which shape I'm finding surface area for. So the cylinder, the surface area is going to be made up of the lateral area plus the area of the base that makes up the front of the cylinder plus the area that makes up the base of the back of the cylinder. So the first thing I need to do is go find lateral area. Lateral area is going to be from my formula sheet 2 pi r h, or in other words, 2 times pi times 4, and we said the height of the cylinder was 20. So 160 pi for the lateral area. The area of the base we already found, and each of those circular bases has an area of 16 pi, giving us a total surface area of 192 for the cylinder. But again, I'm remembering that we only have half of a cylinder, so I'm going to take that 192 pi and I'm going to divide it by 2. making our surface area of that half cylinder 96 pi. And if you want to, you can include the units, square inches. OK, then moving right along, I'm going to go find the surface area of that rectangular prism. And if I consider the picture here, that rectangular prism is made up of uh, rectangular faces. So I'm going to consider the rectangles that comprise or make up the surface area 
of that rectangular prism. There's a rectangle that makes up the front and the back of the mailbox, and the dimensions of that rectangle are 8 by 5, making its area 40 square units. And I should identify to the reader that this represents the front and the back side of the mailbox. There's a rectangle that makes up the left side and the right side of my mailbox. The dimensions of that rectangle that make up the left side and the right side are 20 inches long by 5 inches high, giving him an area of 100 square inches. And then I have a rectangle that makes up the base or the bottom of my mailbox. Notice that while the bottom is on the surface, the top is inside the mailbox and not part of the surface area. So I'm going to say this guy is just the bottom. And that bottom rectangle has dimensions 20 in inches long by 8 inches wide, giving him an area of 160 square inches. So the total area for this rectangular prism is going to be two of those that make up the front and the back, plus two of those that make up the left and the right, plus the bottom of that rectangular prism. So I'm going to go ahead and add those together on my calculator for a grand total of 440 square units for the rectangular prism. So the surface area is going to include the 96 pi for the surface area of my half cylinder plus the 440 square units that make up the surface area of my rectangular prism. I'm going to label that square inches, and I'm going to remember that these two guys are not like terms and cannot be combined. All right, then up at the top page, like always, you're going to summarize the key ideas and important understandings in your own words and see if you can apply what you know to solve the problems on the next page. Okay.